Ukrainian media have nicknamed it Putin's vulture. As Kyiv's counteroffensive slowly gathers pace, Russia is deploying more of these Ka-52 attack helicopters, using them to target Ukraine's limited supply of Western armor, including its Bradley fighting vehicles and Leopard 2 tanks. The Ukrainians have a problem with their, of course, their air defense. A lot of air defense that's designed to protect cities. It's not designed to to attack helicopters that are very close to the ground and only appear fleetingly for a few seconds while the crews launch the missiles. They sort of pop up above a hill line, above a tree line, fire a missile and then drop down again. So the Ukrainians are having great difficulty finding these helicopters and targeting them. At the start of the war, the Ukrainians were on the defensive, small units ambushing Russian tanks with Enlor and Javelin missiles. Now things have changed. It's the Ukrainian armour that's breaking cover, advancing across open countryside, putting them right in the sights of the alligator. These are are found by the the crew of the helicopter. They use their night vision system to pick up the heat of the Ukrainian tanks, and then they program the the missiles and they ride a laser beam to the target. It's not quite like the the GPS-guided bombs that the RAF drop or even the laser-guided bombs that they drop. This is a very different different type of laser guidance that they pin the target with the laser and then the, the missile rides the beam. Along with the MI-28, the Alligator is Russia's equivalent to the Apache. Designed as a long-range, all-weather attack helicopter, it can strike both ground and air targets. But it's the Alligator's tank-killing abilities that are causing the Ukrainians the most problems. It can carry advanced laser-guided anti-tank missiles with a range of six miles. It also has a whole range of protection systems that can jam electronics, detect lasers or warn of approaching missiles. And that's making it hard to counter. We're talking between five and ten kilometres range. This is the distance where the people on the ground probably can't even see the helicopter. And if it's at night, they have no idea they're under attack. If you remember those those videos from the 1991 Gulf War of those Iraqi tanks being picked off by the American Apache, it's the first time we've seen that kind of thing. This is the, the Russian equivalent of that. Just like an Apache, the Alligator is crewed by a pilot and a gunner. It's designed for battlefield survivability, and usually for a military helicopter, it's fitted with two ejection seats. And rather than a single set of rotor blades, it uses two contra-rotating rotors, removing the need for a vulnerable tail rotor. First of all, it means all the power of the engines can propel the helicopter forward rather than spinning the tail rotor, which takes some power. And also, it makes the helicopter more survivable. Some video came out showing a a Ka-52 with its tail fin blown off, but the helicopter still got back to base because it wasn't relying on the tail rotor. If that was a conventional helicopter, the the man pad that hit the, the back of the helicopter would have taken off the tail rotor and the helicopter was spun into the ground. The Russians have reportedly deployed 20 extra alligators to Berdyansk airport, around 62 miles behind the front line. So what can the Ukrainians do to destroy them? There's a couple of things they can do. They can, first of all, try and target the Russian helicopter landing sites. They have the HIMARS missiles, they have long-range artillery. They can try and force the Russians to pull their helicopters back by knocking out their, um, their forward bases. Then they can use their own artillery. This is a bit more tricky, but it it can be quite effective to use their artillery fire to try and bracket the helicopters when they're on patrolling. Because to fire these missiles, briefly, they have to be static. So at that point in time where they're popping up to to find the targets and uh, use their missiles, if they have a few artillery rounds going in their direction, it puts the crew off and they are disrupted in their attack. And finally, they've got some aircraft, they've got some of their fighters, they've got some of their Sukhois and their MiGs, which they could throw into the battle to try and, again, disrupt the the helicopters. Even if they don't stand much chance of catching them, just by their presence, it will put the helicopter crews off their stride, make them nervous and make them more cautious about going forward to, to engage the tanks. The UK MOD says Russia had 90 Ka-52s at the start of the war. 35 have reportedly been lost, but there's enough left to pose a real threat. With F-16s unlikely to arrive in Ukraine until late this year, at the earliest, Kyiv needs to find a way of countering this deadly gunship if it hopes to push its leopards and challengers forward without taking significant losses. Simon Newton, Forces News.